All right, in this video, we're going to see how to simplify arithmetic expressions using the order of operations. So just have arithmetic, no variables, and we want to try to simplify this to a single number at the end. Really, the first thing you want to do, I think, is go in and put in any implied parentheses in here. Um, when you have a large fraction, there's implied parentheses around the whole numerator and implied parentheses around the whole denominator. And when you have radicals, like a square root, there's implied parentheses around the inside, or the radicand. All right, now the parentheses step, which applies to all grouping symbols, parentheses, brackets, and absolute value bars, uh, tells you to work inside those things first. So this would tell us that we, before we do that division, we need to resolve the numerator and denominator separately. All right, so we're going to do one loop of this process just for the numerator. So let's just take the numerator and just work with that first. All right, so when you look at the numerator, um, there's no other operations inside parentheses. So you would go on and check for exponents. And there are no exponents. So you would then go to multiplication and division. And with this, you're doing multiplication division at the same time, going left to right. So first thing you see going left to right is 15 divided by 3. And so we would do that division first and get 5. And the next thing you see is the multiplication, 5 times 2. And so you would multiply and get 10. Similarly, addition and subtraction are the same step. So we go left to right, and whichever one we see first, that's what we do first. So 10 minus 9 is what we see first. And so we do 10 minus 9 to get 1. And at the end, of course, it's just 1 plus 8 to give us 9. So the numerator is 9. All right, now we're going to repeat those steps for any other sets of grouping symbols. And so in this case, we're going to repeat the whole process for be for the denominator. All right, so let's take a look at the denominator, which is right here. And we'll put that right there. All right, and uh, since we have a set of parentheses in the denominator with an operation inside of those, that's the first thing we would actually do. So we would resolve that subtraction inside parentheses first. Right, we just do 18 and subtract 2 to get 16. Right, we don't need those parentheses anymore. All right, now there's no more parentheses. We would check for exponents, and that includes radicals. So in this case, we would resolve the square root. Simplify that. Square root of 16 is 4. All right, at this point, it's obvious there's nothing to do but the addition, so no multiplication and division, and the addition and subtraction is just 4 plus 1 to give us 5. Right, so the denominator is 5. Right, and then we just put those together and get our final answer, which is a fraction, and the denominator is five and the numerator was nine. And if you can reduce that fraction, you would. In this case, it's already reduced. You could also convert that to an exact decimal if you wanted to write it as 1.8. Alright, we've got one more example. And it is here. There's no implied parentheses to put in this one. Um, but notice there are brackets being used as grouping symbols. Right? And we have nested grouping symbols. So within the brackets, we have a set of parentheses. And so when you have this going on, the first thing you actually want to do is go to the innermost set, right? work from the inside out. And so the first thing you actually do is to do a subtraction here. So we do 8 minus 4, and we would get Four. 
Now that set of parentheses is resolved, so we now look at what's just inside the brackets. Right, looking inside the brackets, um, you look for exponents, and we do see an exponent of 4 with an exponent of 2, so we would then do that. And 4 with an exponent of 2 is 16. Right, and the last thing inside the brackets is that division. So we would go ahead and do the division. 16 divided by 16 is 1. All right, so that sort of wraps it up. There is no addition and subtraction inside the brackets. And we're now ready to repeat the steps for the remaining expression. All right, with the remaining expression, there are no exponents. And there's no division, but there is a multiplication. So we would do that multiplication next, and the multiplication is the negative 6 times 1. And so that would give us negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. All right, at the very end we have the subtraction, negative 2 and negative 6 would give us negative 8. So the answer is negative 8. All right, let me show you really quickly how you could actually put this all into a calculator and have the calculator use the order of operations. So with the first example, again, you need to use the implied parentheses version. So parentheses 15 divided by 3, parentheses 2, parentheses minus 9, plus 8. Close the parentheses for the numerator. Division, so it's not going to appear as a big fraction, but forward slash division is going to sort of say that's now the the top of the fraction, and we're going to put in the bottom, square root, 18 minus 2. Now, in these graphing calculators now, it actually knows how to put stuff inside the square root with extra operations. But you may have to use parentheses in, with other calculators, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in anyway. And then plus 1, and then close the parentheses to close off the denominator. So that's equivalent to that expression, and we can actually have it get us simplified in one step. Write it math, enter, enter, and you can write it as a fraction. Of course, the same answer that we got. Let's try the other one. We have negative 2 minus 6. Now, there are no brackets on this calculator, so we'll just use parentheses. And we have 16 divided by 8 minus 4. And then the exponent of 2. And then closing the brackets out. And there's the negative 8. 